One of the most popular types of applications that we see people building with Langchain are retrieval-based applications. Retrieval-based applications are when you do some retrieval step to fetch context to pass to the language model so that it can better respond. This is really, really popular because it's the best way currently to combine language models with your data, whether that be current event data that the language model wasn't trained on, um, your private data that the language model wasn't trained on, or, or any of the like. There's a lot of different steps in retrieval, and so we've put a lot of emphasis on making sure that these steps are defined modularly and have clear interfaces for each steps, have a lot of depth to each of those steps, and then also have ways to easily kind of like build up those steps into a more end-to-end uh, -end application. And so we see people using Langchain uh, retrieval uh, methods and, and, and classes in a variety of ways from the kind of like build it yourself um, where you're taking these individual components and customizing them and, and, and building them up um, to just like quick start in five lines of code. And so here I want to walk through a few uh, key parts of retrieval that we've been focused on. Um, so walking through uh, a few high level ones one really important one is the idea of document loaders. So in order to do retrieval, for the most part, over your data, you need to load that data um, into some format, index that data, um, and, and then only then can you search over it. And so document loaders are the first step in that process. They're loading that data. So there they, we have, I think we have like a, over 100 different document loaders that can load data from Slack, Notion, Files, S3, all, a crazy amount of... of um, document loaders the community has added. And so these basically are responsible for loading that data. Once you have that data loaded, you then need to index it. And so the first step there is getting it into a, a reasonable size to be indexed. So you generally want to index smaller chunks of data so that you can then retrieve only the most relevant chunks. So if I have like a hundred page document, I probably want to index individual chunks because then I want to retrieve those individual chunks and pass only the most relevant ones to the language model. So I'm only passing the five most relevant chunks um, to the language model um, instead of the whole 100 pages. So a really uh, uh, important question with a lot of nuance is how do I create those chunks? If I have this 100 page document, how do I create a bunch of small chunks that I can then do, that I can then index and then pass to the language model of which I retrieve a few of them. Um, there's a bunch of different strategies for this. Um, this is what we call text splitting. For taking the example of a 100 page document, maybe you split on each page, maybe you split on each paragraph. Um, if you know that, if, if you know that the document's written in a certain format, like Markdown, you can use Markdown specific tokens to kind of like split that document. And so we have uh, 15 plus different text splitters that split varying types of code, document types um, in different links with different overlaps and, and all of the above. Once you've created those smaller chunks, then you can index it. Step one is creating embeddings for those chunks. And so we do that with uh, uh, one of the 60 plus different embedding models that we have integrations for, and then you store it in a vector store. And so again, we have about 60 plus different vector stores that you can store things in. After you've stored them, um, then you need to retrieve them. We have a lot of advanced retrieval methods. The most basic one is just doing some sort of similarity search between an incoming question and the document. So you just find the documents that have an embedding that are most similar to the incoming question. But there are a lot of different um, and advanced retrieval methods that we have from ones that rely on uh, doing different calculations with the in in embeddings um, to ones that actually use language models to rewrite the query or, or generate multiple queries or, or any of the like. Once you have the documents from a retriever, you then need to pass those to a language model to generate a final response. And for that, we'll, we'll use a lot of the chaining and, and, and uh, language models and prompts and, and output parsers that we've talked about before. Putting this a little bit more concretely, let's walk through a notebook that I've prepared to step through this. So first, we're going to load um, some documentation about Lane Smith. Um, and so we're going to use this using one of the document loaders we have. We're then going to split this. Um, documents into smaller chunks. So if we look at the length of the documents here, we can see that we have one document. If we apply this text splitter, we can see that we now have five documents. 
Um, we can then index those documents. Um, so we can do that by using OpenAI embeddings as well as this uh, uh, in-memory vector store. Um, we can create those. That'll go relatively fast. Um, and now we have the step where we query documents. Um, so first we need the, the prompt in the language model that takes in documents, qu uh, question, and returns a response. So we'll do that with this prompt template and this language model and we create this chain, um, which will basically do the prompt, the, the language model, some output parser, and then also it will take care of the processing of the documents. We'll create the stuffed documents chain, and then we'll combine this with the retriever because we don't want to pass in the documents directly. We want to use a retriever to fetch them. So we'll create a retriever from our vector store, and then we'll create a retrieval chain using this retriever in the document chain. And now if we ask how Langsmith can help with testing, we'll get back an answer that's grounded in the documents that we fetched. If we take a look at what this looks like in Langsmith under the hood, we can see that we have these two subchains here. So first we have this retrieve documents chain, um, which calls a retriever. Uh, we get in this input and we get back a, a list of documents. And then we have this stuff documents chain. This stuff documents chain takes in documents and takes in input um, and then returns this output. We can also use uh, one of the more advanced retrieval methods that we have. So I'll talk more about this in a little bit, but there are a lot of different methods. One of them is the multi-query retriever. This uses an LLM to generate multiple queries, looks up documents for all of those, and then returns all those documents. So this is really good for breaking down more complex problems. So we can create this advanced retriever um, by, uh, by passing in uh, uh, the retriever um, that it will use as a base retriever, and then the LLM to generate the bunch of queries. Um, we can then pass that advanced retriever into the retrieval chain, um, and then we can call the uh, uh, the new advanced retrieval chain and get back a response. We can also see what this looks like in Lang Smith under the hood. So if we look at it here, we can see that now the retrieve documents chain has a lot more complexity to it. So it's calling this high level retriever. Under the hood, that retriever is first calling OpenAI and it's generating three sub questions and it's passing each of those sub questions into the retriever and that's making a call and it's getting back documents, and then it's combining the documents and then passing that into OpenAI at the end. We have a lot more resources on retrieval because retrieval is a really complex subject. One of my favorite resources that we've added is if you go to retrievers here, you'll see a list of all the advanced retriever types that we support. So there's basic stuff here like vector stores, but then there's things like parent document retrievers which will basically fetch small chunks, but then return the larger parent chunks. Um, Multi-vector retrievers, which are in even more generalized form where you can store any representation of a document, like a summary or a quote or a hypothetical uh, question, retrieve those, but then pass the larger documents into the language model, self-query, contextual compression, time-weighted vector store, multi-query, ensemble, reordering. So we, we have a whole table of these advanced retrieval methods, as well as a description of when to use it. So we know that there are a lot of advanced retrieval methods out there. A big part of doing retrieval right is choosing the one that works for you. And so we've tried to make it easy to determine that by, by having this description in this table here. We also have a use case page specifically for question answering with RAG. So there are a lot of resources here on how to uh, get started with a quick start, um, returning sources, uh, creating a chat bot, so adding in chat history, uh, doing per user retrieval. So if you, if you want to basically build some multi-tenant application where you're storing documents for user A and then user B, but you only want user A to search their documents, you need to configure that. And so we have some documentation on that, um, how to use local models, how to use agents, which we'll talk about more. But basically we have a lot of resources on retrieval. We have a lot of advanced retrieval methods, but we also have the modular components um, like retrievers by themselves, like document loaders by themselves, like text splitters, that makes it really easy to use any of these um, in any type of retrieval app that you're building.